Lux My Line, brought to you by Kellogg. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And on my left, one of the most brilliant of the rising new comedians, Woody Allen. And on my left, uh, one of the really lovely actresses who's currently appearing at the Mineola Playhouse in Kind Sir, a charming television personality, and the offstage voice of Bugs Bunny, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who is beady-eyed from looking at the bikini-clad ladies at the Fontainebleau in Miami, the sunburned publisher, Bennett Surf. And here is not only one of the great panel moderators in all television, but a man whom I'm told by the man who runs the solarium, Jack, down at the Fontainebleau, is that voice that makes that bleep on all those stainless steel razor blade advertisements that you hear on the, uh, he's that offstage voice of the bleep, Woody. John Charles Bleep Davis. Well, it's a great way to start the new year is the voice of a razor blade. <laughs> and I just say to you, Bennett, you better worry about the cutting edge on this blade, <laughs> if I may say so. Woody Allen, it's very nice to see you with us. Thank you. It's a good way for us to begin the, the new year to see you in that chair. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. Just relax. There isn't much to it. You may have noticed that Bennett has Terribly aged a good hard. deal. <laughs> and he aged right there in that chair. But he aged well. We have some very interesting occupations, and uh, I think that you'll enjoy the next half hour, Woody. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this one. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Harriet? Goldstein, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Goldstein says she's nervous. You don't have a thing to be nervous about. Where are you from? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Nobody knows. <laughs> Miss Goldstein, may I present our panel? Hello. Now, would you join me over here? Do you know uh, all the tricks and foibles and such mm -hmm. of what's my line, then I guess there's nothing left to do but tell our friends here in the audience in the theater and the audience at home exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. We can tell you that Miss Goldstein is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Ms. Goldstein, does your service bring you into contact in any way with the general public? Yes. Uh, do you serve both men and women? Yes. Do you come into physical contact at any time with the people you are serving? Mm. Uh, sometimes. Now, is your question uh, seeking <laughs> advantage to determine whether this contact is critical to the... Uh, Doing of the service? I didn't say that, John. I simply well. asked whether she came in contact. 
I just, you know, as long as you understand that we might, all of us, no matter what functions we perform, come into contact occasionally with uh, other members of the public, I wouldn't want you to be misled this early in the year. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Goldstein, uh, when you perform your service, uh, do you get paid by the people for whom you perform it? Yes. Do they hand you ever any money directly? Yes. Do you have anything whatever to do with either food or drink? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Goldstein, do you work indoors mostly? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Thank you so much. Uh, do you wear anything special uh, when you do the thing you do to people? Do you wear anything special by way of a uniform or costume when you do no. what you do? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with getting around, with uh, transportation in any way, with moving from place to place? Yes. Are you in a vehicle when you are moving from place to place? Yes. Is the vehicle a four-wheeler? Yes. Would it be considered a car in any uh, matter of speech at all? Yes. Uh, are you ever behind the wheel of this? car? Yes. Uh, do you ever carry any passengers? Yes. Are you something other than a taxi driver? No. 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 <laughs> right. Good go. Four down and six to go. Ben Let and I take, bet you can get this. Let me take a guess. <laughs> let me think. <laughs> You're a taxi driver. Right. <laughs> way to start the new year anyway we'll throw all the cards over to begin the new year but this is interesting what did you have to do besides no you have to have a chauffeur's license what else did you have to do to uh, become a taxi driver you take a geography test and yeah. uh, physical now do you have to know all five boroughs queens and kings and richmond and Man manhattan and, and the bronx well most of them uh -huh. do but you ever you... have any trouble i mean with the people with the passengers <laughs> sometimes how is it? Is it fun? It is a lot of fun. Miss <laughs> Goldstein, I'd like to ask you a question, a technical question about taxi. The fellow drove, drove us down Miami Beach told us that now to get a medallion to drive a taxi cab in New York costs over $25,000. Is that yes, correct? That's right. That means before you're allowed to even go out and buy your own taxi cab, you that's have to right. pay... $26,000. $26,000? Mm -hmm. Why? To get the medallion that is in the it's a solid gold medallion. Well, who do you get it from? <laughs> oh, you, well, you can buy it from somebody else who owns one. Oh, I see. see, the trick is they were, I, I've forgotten how many are out. Do you know how many are out? I think over 12,000. Over 12,000. But then the city froze the issuance of these medallions. They won't sell any, won't issue any new ones. Well, I think like the original ones license. cost $5. Yeah. So that if you have a medallion and therefore the right to drive a taxi cab in New York, you can sell this medallion as you would a house or, or an automobile. And the current market price for a medallion for a taxi that, driver. That's because of the coming World's Fair, they tell us. That's what sent the price up. Well, now, it's been up, and it, or actually almost uh, right after the war, it started to go up, and it's been going through the roof ever since. Sounds like too much. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll refer them to Random House when they come in with a complaint <laughs> about that price. And thank you very much for being our guest, and it's nice to have you on the Challenger, will you come in and sign in, please? Carl Otto, right there. Uh, Mr. Otto, where are you from? From uh, Missouri, near St. Louis. Oh, well, it's nice to have somebody from the Midwest with us, sir. I'm glad you're in New York tonight, and may I present our panel, Mr. Otto? <laughs> Will you join me here, and uh, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All righty, we can tell you that Mr. Otto is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Otto, is your product solid rather than liquid? Solid, yes. Uh, 
do you think that under the proper set of circumstances, I might own this product? Yes, indeed. You seem very enthusiastic. <laughs> would I like it if I owned it? Well, I'm sure you would. Uh, would I keep it in my house? Yes, indeed. Would I keep it where people could see it? I think so. Sort of lying around? Yes. Well, this, this, but if I may, Mr. Otter, this would be a matter of your discretion. Certainly, there'd be no reason why you couldn't leave it lying around, but you might elect, you know, to put it, to put it away somewhere. Uh -huh. I might let it lie around, but I might not leave it lie around. Okay. Um, <coughs> all right. Mr. Otto, uh, could Mr. Allen also have this product? Yes. So there is no particular gender interested in this product? That's right. Could children be interested in it? Yes. Children could be interested. Mm -hmm. is, is it in any sense decorative? Well, yes and no. That's a very good. I would, would say that. Would you like Dorothy, to explain that a little, Mr. Otto? Well, we can't. We actually can't answer in detail. I will say that the product itself is sometimes, uh, with prior determination, made uh, more attractive than at another time, so that it would have a decorative aspect to it. But this would not necessarily be its principal function. Would you say that it was basically useful? Oh yes. Mm. Uh, may I assume that it is not a food? That's right. Uh, may I assume it is not a piece of wearing apparel? Um, just... Some do and some don't, I guess, are they? <laughs> well, we know what they do in Missouri. Not basically. Not basically. But it's something I could tote around if I felt like it? That's right. All right. Um, is it smaller than a bread box? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, if I carried it down Fifth Avenue, uh, would it be conspicuous? I don't think so. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so I, would, I think with your permission, Mr. Otto, I would say, Dorothy, if you were to have this product and to utilize it on Fifth Avenue, it would tend to focus attention on you, yes. <laughs> Does this product have any movable parts? Uh, they can be moved, yes. What can be moved? Car parts. Oh. Uh, does this product, when it comes in contact with a human hand or with anything else, do anything besides just lie there? <laughs> Well, it has a use, but you mean, does it instantaneously react to the touch of a human hand by or jumping or putting moving? Putting in a plug or something like that? Ah, good. That clarification was what Thank we needed. Thank you, John. One down and right time to go. One of it. Good um, luck, Woody. Is, is it um, what you would call something that I would be proud to uh, have? Oh, I'm sure you would, Mr. Allen. Oh, I would be. Uh, and it, I assume it's not something that you could be... Uh, it's some, is it expensive? Uh, yes and no. You could get a gold one. Well, no way. I think probably to help us, give us your idea of what expensive would mean. Is it more than three dollars? No. <laughs> Thanks very much. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. It's less than three dollars. Mm -hmm. Is it made of some kind of material? Yes. Uh, could you fold it if you wanted to? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Rado, I didn't hear the town you came from, Missouri. Would you, would you tell us again where you are from? Near St. Louis, Bennett. That doesn't do much good at all. <laughs> That's all you're going to get. What's near St. Louis? Yeah. If, you, if we mention the name of the town, might there be some uh, connection that would lead us to guess at the product? We have reason to believe that some member of the panel might have an awareness of the specific character of a product which originates in a specific town by a specific name, and we have no intention of giving you any more information. Oh, may we Mr. Rada, no, please, okay. Dorothy, let All me right. do this by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rado, uh, is the, your product ever used by people who might be indulging in, in smoking of any kind? Well, yes. 
uh, there's, a, there's a place not far from St. Louis where they make wonderful corncob pipes. <laughs> Have I hit it? We will confess the reason we had no intention of saying Washington, Missouri, was because we were afraid you would remember that you once wrote about the I making of corncob pipes in Washington, Missouri. That's right. I remember doing a piece about the, the wonderful pipes that come from there, and they sent me about 2,000 corncob pipes. <laughs> I never saw them. <laughs> the Missouri Merchant Pipe Company, of which Mr. Otto is president. Now, this is going to surprise you. How many do you make every year, Mr. Otto? We make from 8 to 10 million. 8 to 10 million. And Dorothy, talk about decorative. They put little plastic covers on the ones for women. I mean, when I say plastic covers, I mean the corn cob bowl uh, in bright red and all colors, and they have bands and glue. Can't wait to see you smoke one. Well, I want to. I want to <laughs> tell you that my big call for a conference was going to clue Bennett in that it might be Independence, Missouri, and I thought that our guest might have something to do with the Truman Library. How do you like that? Well, that was close. Well, you're, doing, you're doing very well indeed, Mr. Otto. Thank you for being our guest. Thank Hope you, you enjoyed your visit. tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger. And as you all know, this, wait for Woody. this calls for the blindfolding of our panelists. And Mr. Allen is having a little problem because his mask doesn't quite fit over his glasses. The mask is now over the glasses. Mr. Allen is sitting up straight. Mr. Allen is ready. <laughs> Are you all ready, panel? Yes. yes sir. Good. Will you enter a mystery challenger and sign in, please? is aware that different form of questioning now one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and after all that work I think we owe it to Woody Allen to call on him first. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you, um, you deserved all those applause, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Are you in uh, entertainment or, or that, that um, yes. anything like that? Show business or the like? Yep. You just get that one shot. Actually, I gave you two, Woody, so you just, you can relax for a minute. Now it's Miss Francis. Are you best known for your work in the theater? Mm. It's a, that's it. I would say known well for work in the theater, Arlene, and, but... Uh, Isn't that John's voice? Yeah, that's, oh, that's John. <laughs> Now, just the question is a little difficult to answer, so I'd try. We're known well for work in the theater, but we yes. don't exclude the other areas, right, Mr. Sir? Uh, have you ever done any work also, as well as the theater, in nightclubs or hotels? Yes. Ms. Kilgallen? Nightclubs or hotels? Uh, would you consider yourself a comedian? No. That makes it one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, are you, do you wind up with the girl at the end? I beg your pardon? <laughs> nope, that's two down and eight to go, Miss Preston. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's a lady to be, I think. Are you performing at the present time uh, at the Americana Hotel here in New York City? <laughs> Is it the lady with the most fascinating hands as well as voice in show business, Pearl Bailey? Yeah. Pinning it down, too, because Miss Pearl is the... end up with the girl, yes. Pearl's in the royal box at the Americana. I'm afraid that you'd rather be aware, I think, with a possibility that she might be... Well, I can't do anything guess. with my voice. Well, yes. you don't yes. want to do anything Woody. with your voice, no, Pearl. I thought it was you Paul Newman. You just that wonderful voice right in. <laughs> 
the only ones that they, they found out that we could like, go very deep. And I, I kept sinking. <laughs> you, 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 I always, uh, almost went into oblivion. <laughs> then, then I, uh, <laughs> well, I, you made it, Miss Pearl, because you fooled Woody Allen. That's the sitch. Yeah, I don't think we ever met. That's how I fooled. I, I fooled Miss Kilgallen. That, that was something. Well, different. my next question was going to be, do you ever work with Sweet Sanderson? Oh, yes. That was going to be my next yes. question. Uh, and then I was worried would that, have that done it? Um, Mr. Surf was worrying me because I thought he would want to publish one of my books or something, and I didn't well, want to refuse. Well, thank you so much thank for visiting us much. and what's my thank name. You. Another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now we're our final contestant to enter and sign in, please. James P. Walk. All right, sir? <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Walsh, where are you from? Crocker Center, New Jersey. Sockus. Center, Center, New Jersey. Center, New Jersey. May I present the panel? Do you join me over here? We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, we can tell you that uh, Mr. Walsh is salaried and deals in a product, and we'll begin with um, Arlene Francis. Is it a product I might use, Mr. Walsh? Yes, you might. Um, do you, uh, do you think that this product did well at Christmas time? <laughs> no, no. What no. happened I to go, Mr. Sir? Mr. Walsh, has your product ever been, or is it still alive? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Walsh, could I live and die without having your product? No offense intended. Possible. Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes. Uh, if one had it, would it be found in the home? Sometimes. It could be found other places, too? Yes. Could it be readily carried about? Not readily. Not readily. No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, it, it's an un-Christmas style thing. Is, oh. it, <laughs> is, it, uh, is it nasty in any way? No, no. <laughs> That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. And included in that, there is nothing dangerous about this product. Not really. No. Um, is it a very useful product? Yes. Is it a product that is applied to something for it to be of a benefit? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Walsh, is there anything seasonal about this product? You say it didn't do well at Christmas. No. <laughs> six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Does it have better. any movable parts? No. no. Seven dot and three to go, Mr. Allen. Uh, is it the kind of thing that I might be likely to own? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, what do you own? What do you uh, own? Um, is it, is it um, the, of a luxury nature rather than a necessity? No. no. <laughs> I've got to throw all the cards over because this is fun. No, actually, um, Mr. Walsh sells garbage cans. <laughs> He's with the, he's with the Wheeling, Wheeling Corrugating Company, which is a part of Wheeling Steel, and those nice big corrugated steel garbage cans. That's what Thank I wanted much, for sir. Christmas. Wonderful yeah, to have you with us. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. And on that happy note, good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, John. Bye, Woody. Good night, Dorothy, and good night, Arlene. Good night, Woody, and you're going to be all right. Now, don't worry. <laughs> good night, Bennett. Wonder what kind of a book Pearl Bailey has in mind, John. She'll I tell you. Know. Good night, John. <laughs> good night, Bennett. And you know, I must say here, I can't get away from this surf. We were out in California during the Christmas and New Year's period, and up in the Napa Valley, we went to a, a small do, and guess what? I ran into some people who know Bennett's cousins. <laughs> and their names are surf, too. What a way to start the new year. And thank you all for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totman.
Johnny Olson speaking. exactly what your line is. All right, panel. We can tell you that Miss Goldstein is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Miss Goldstein, does your service bring you into contact in any way with the general public? Yes. Uh, do you serve both men and women? Yes. Do you come into physical contact at any time with the people you are serving? Mm. Uh, sometimes. Now, is your question uh, seeking <laughs> Bennett to determine whether this contact is critical to the uh, doing of the service? I didn't say that, John. I simply well. asked whether she came into contact. I just, you know, as long as you understand that we might, all of us, no matter what functions we perform, come into contact occasionally with uh, other members of the public, I wouldn't want you to be misled this early in the year. Thank you, John. <laughs> Ms. Goldstein, uh, when you perform your service, uh, do you get paid by the people for whom you perform it? Yes. Do they hand you ever any money directly? Mm, yes. Do you have anything whatever to do with either food or drink? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Goldstein, do you work indoors mostly? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen. Thank you so much. Uh, do you wear anything special uh, when you do the thing you do to people? Do you wear anything special by way of a uniform or costume when you do no. what you do? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with getting around, with the transportation in any way, with moving from place to place? Yes. Are you in a vehicle when you are moving from place to place? Yes. Is the vehicle... Coming World's Fair, they tell us. That's what sent the price up. Well, now, it's been up, and it's oh, actually almost uh, right after the war, it started to go up, and it's been going through the roof ever since. Sounds like too much. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll refer them to Random House when they come in with a complaint <laughs> about that crack. And thank you very much for being our guest, and it's nice to have you on. <laughs> now to meet our next challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Carl? Otto, right there. Uh, Mr. Otto, where are you from? From uh, Missouri, near St. Louis. Oh, well, it's nice to have somebody from the Midwest with us, sir. I'm glad you're in New York tonight, and may I present our panel, Mr. Otto. <laughs> Will you join me here, and uh, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Alrighty, we can tell you that Mr. Otto is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Otto, is your product solid rather than liquid? Solid, yes. Uh, do you think that under the proper set of circumstances, I might own this product? Yes, indeed. You seem very enthusiastic. <laughs> Would I like it if I owned it? Oh, I'm sure you would. Uh, would I keep it in my house? Yes, indeed. Would I keep it where people could see it? I think so. Sort of lying around? Well, yes. this, this, well, if I may, Mr. Otto, this would be a matter of your discretion. Certainly there would be no... by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from 
Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And on my left, one of the most brilliant of the rising new comedians, Woody Allen. Thank you. And on my left, uh, one of the really lovely actresses who's currently appearing at the Mineola Playhouse in Kind Sir, a charming television personality, and the offstage voice of Bugs Bunny, Miss Arlene Francis. And now a gentleman who is beady-eyed from looking at the bikini-clad ladies at the Fontainebleau in Miami, the sunburned publisher, Bennett Surf. And here is not only one of the great panel moderators in all television, but a man whom I'm told by the man who runs the solarium, Jack, down at the Fontainebleau, is that voice that makes that bleep on all those stainless steel razor blade advertisements that you hear on the, uh, he's that offstage voice of the bleep, Woody. John Charles Bleep Davis. Well, it's a great way to start the new year is the voice of a razor blade. <laughs> and I just say to you, Bennett, you better worry about the cutting edge on this blade, <laughs> if I may say so. Woody Allen, it's very nice to see you with us. Thank you. It's a good way for us to begin the, the new year to see you in that chair. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. Just relax. There isn't much to it. You may have noticed that Bennett has Terribly aged a good hard. deal. <laughs> and he aged right there in that chair. But he aged well. We have some very interesting occupations, and uh, I think that you'll enjoy the next half hour, Woody. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this one. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Harriet? Goldstein, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Goldstein says she's nervous. She don't have a thing to be nervous about. Where are you from? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Nobody's ever there. <laughs> Miss Goldstein, may I present our panel? Now, Hello. would you join me over here? Do you know uh, all the tricks and... Foibles and such mm -hmm. of what's my line? Then I guess there's nothing left to do but tell our friends here in the audience of the theater and the audience at home. Vehicle uh, four-wheeler. Yes. Would it be considered a car in any uh, matter of speech at all? Yes. Uh, are you ever behind the wheel of this car? Yes. Uh, do you ever carry any passengers? Yes. Are you something other than a taxi driver? No. 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 <laughs> right, good go. Four down and six to go. Ben, I bet you can get this. Let me take a guess. <laughs> let me take a guess. <laughs> You're a taxi driver. Right. <laughs> well, that's the way to start the new year anyway. We'll throw all the cards over to begin the new year. But this is interesting. What did you have to do besides... I know you have to have a chauffeur's license. What else did you have to do to um, become a taxi driver? You take a geography test and yeah. uh, physical. Now, do you have to know all five boroughs, Queens and Kings and Richmond and Man Manhattan and, and the Bronx? Well, most of them. Uh -huh. Do but you ever you... have any trouble? I mean, with the people, with the passengers? <laughs> Sometimes. How is it? Is it fun? It is a lot of fun. 
<laughs> Miss Goldstein, I'd like to ask you a question, a technical question about Titanic. The fellow who drove, in, drove us down Miami Beach told us that now to get a medallion to drive a taxi cab in New York costs over $25,000. Is that yes, correct? That's right. That means before you're allowed to even go out and buy your own taxi cab, you that's have to right. pay... $26,000. $26,000? Mm -hmm. Why? To get the medallion that is... To be in the solid gold medallion. Well, who no. do you get it from? <laughs> oh, you, well, you can buy it from somebody else who owns one. Oh, I see. see. the trick is they... Were, I, I've forgotten how many are out. Do you know how many are out? I think over 12,000. Over 12,000. But then the city froze the issuance of these medallions. They won't sell any... won't issue any new ones. Well, I think like the original ones license. cost $5. Yeah. So that if you have a medallion and therefore the right to drive a taxi cab in New York, you can sell this medallion as you would a house or, or an automobile, and the current market price for a medallion for a taxi that, driver. That's because of the